Right, I face the daunting task of uh, trying to summarize the richness of this event, so I, I hope you'll be kind in your assessment of this, my summary or my report or my reflections uh, from participating in your session today. And what I decided to do was to extract uh, some of the important points that were meaningful to me uh, from our presenters in, in this last session. Of course, throughout um, this event, uh, I think what stands out is USP putting the learner first. Uh, the, you know, the fact that it's the learning and teaching forum is quite significant. And by far the most compelling contribution during the session today were the student contributions. Um, Fulori, I thank you for reminding us of the value of providing digital texts uh, that are compatible with screen readers uh, and I think this is an important call for those of us that are working in OER to keep inclusive design first and foremost in all the work that we do and so thank you for your contribution it, it, it was inspiring. Ernest I, I must say um, you are going to propel us to respond to our core mission in the academy and that's about sharing knowledge freely. I, I must compliment you on your presentation format and your style. Uh, it was really an engaging presentation so I would like, you, like to thank you very much for that contribution. Uh, moving on to, to Matthew's presentation, I must say your humility is inspiring and thank you. Um, key, Factors that came out for me, I found it interesting, your, your reference and, and to how you've been using the OER Commons, because I recall um, actually being at the very first event where the funding for that project was announced. And I could never believe that uh, institutions in you know, the South Pacific would be putting the OERU Commons and the work of the great team, Lisa Petridis at Ixme, have you know, put together around that. And it kind of reminds me a little about this OER movement. We are still a small family, and we kind of know each other. Um, and that's it. There's something that is very, very special about the work that we're doing in the open education space. I mean, I think one of the key lessons I extracted from the work that you are doing is how you've successfully integrated your work in, uh, with OER into your kind of mainstream activities as kind of part of your workflow. And I think that's an important lesson for all of us that are, have to work in the trenches of OER rather than use an approach that is you know, adding time and uh, is a, you know, adding on top of an existing job to find interesting ways of actually integrating it into our every, everyday work. Uh, your candor on the risks, uh, of course, uh, are well noted, um, but as you say, I mean, this is a, 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 a growing concern, if you will, in focusing on finding the solutions for the future. Rugova, I, I must say your passion as an educator is very evident in the work that you're doing, so thank you for that. Um, I must uh, also, also say that you have rekindled uh, the interest in rediscovering the artist in each one of us, um, which I think is key and core to our, uh, our work as educators. Um, I think one of the key aspects, or I took two key messages out of your presentation that were important for me. Uh, first, the, the whole notion of using OER or the application of OER to solve real world problems. Um, I, I think that would be incredibly empowering for our learners, but also to make our, our lives as educators more uh, interesting. I also noted that you emphasized context is king, uh, specifically with regards to our work in the Pacific region in terms of how we recontextualize the work for the region. And I think that is a theme that has came, came out across all the presentations. Finally, David, I, I, I must admit and commend your bravery, which far extends my levels of confidence to stand in front of an academic audience and suggest that they're using medieval techniques. Uh, but that said, uh, your pedagogical innovation is inspiring. I think uh, you've really hit the nail on the head, and, and, and that's really about focusing on 
how we prepare learners for a future in a digital workspace, a workspace that is going to be very different from the one that we knew growing up, a workspace that's going to be facing challenges of automation. And I mean, I think this is a key responsibility of ours as academics and how we use OER in uh, preparing learners for the future. So that's pretty much in terms of what, what I took out. If I need to, uh, well, well, not suggest, but to think about ways of moving forward in the future, I think one of the advantages we have in the open education space is to avoid the master plan approach. Um, in sort of traditional planning methodologies, we, we typically build this big master plan that is going to be over the next 10 you know, years as a strategic plan and to try and predict all the steps that we need to take along the way. Uh, in this fast-moving space like OER, we can't realistically know what that future is going to be even next year. And I think what we need to do is just risk a little. Risk a little with projects that are small enough to fail. But the, what, the successes that we learn from, we can collectively build and share together. So with that, I would like to thank you very much for the opportunity to come and join you and, and, and share your experiences with OER. And I will have fond memories of this visit here, and I look forward to great, great things in the open education space coming from the South Pacific. Because if anybody is going to need to lead OER in, the, in this region, it has to be the University of the South Pacific. Thank you very much.